Right, folks, welcome back to Mole Calculations uh, 2, <laughs> or 1.5, actually, it should be today, shouldn't it? 1.5, um, because we're looking still excess questions or limiting questions. Um, we're looking at gas volumes today. Uh, now, this is almost always, not always, but usually a multiple choice question, like I've got one of here, for example. Here's a classic one, um, and it's what's called a total, uh, it's a final total volume question. Um, they're asking about how much gas have you made at the end of the reaction once everything has settled out and condensed. Now, um, some of you, if you've seen my gas uh, volume questions, uh, video, sorry, already, then you might be worried about this molar volume thing. Um, because the molar volume is almost never, in fact, it's never really given in these questions. Uh, and the good news is you don't actually need to use the molar volume for questions where everything is a gas. Because there's a wonderful maths dodge um, that I'm not going to go into too much here. Uh, you know when you have... Uh, see how every different phys sol solid chemical has a different GFM? You know, that's... that's The GFM is invented because 10 billion atoms of carbon do not weigh the same as 10 billion atoms of silicon. They've got different mass numbers, so therefore they would have different weights. And then truth, chemists actually should be paying attention to the numbers of each chemical atom that are in the beaker to react. Once upon a time, before the course was dumbed down a bit, we used to teach something called Avogadro's number, and we actually used to have a bit more fun in games playing with actual numbers. You could calculate how many molecules of water were in your glass, which is quite cool in a geeky way. But that was taken out a few years back. Um, however... Um, we, I'm, I'm rambling here a bit because my point is every chemical has a different GFM because scales weigh in mass, they weigh in grams, they don't weigh in numbers of atoms. So we need to compensate for the fact that some atoms are heavier than others by measuring the GFM of them. But the wonderful, wonderful thing about gases is all gases at the same temperature and pressure whether it's, say, hydrogen, for example, the smallest, simplest one, all the way up to something like radon. or um, If you've got these gases and you've got one mole of any gas at the same temperature and pressure, then they occupy equal volumes. It's as if everything had the same GFM. Now, a consequence of that is your life's actually been made easier for change. I know we don't say that very often in chemistry. Let's have a look at this multiple choice question here again. I might zoom in a touch. There we go. Um, so what's going on here? 100 centimetres cubed of propane is mixed with 600 centimetres cubed of oxygen and it's made to go bang. And you get this reaction here happening. The propane, they're giving you balance, which is nice. Uh, you need a balance reaction for any mole calculation, by the way. So that's why I, I didn't bother. I, I said it in the last video, you know, stage one, balanced reaction. So I suppose same thing here. So stage one, balanced reaction. Balanced equation, sorry. I'm getting tired. It's near the end of the day. Balanced equation. Um, now let's have a look what we do next. So that is a one to five reaction. And these are gases. This is also a gas. And this is not. So we'll come back to the significance of that at the end. You've got 100 centimetres cubed of propane, 600 centimetres cubed of oxygen. So the question is actually asking, at the end of the reaction, the total volume of the gas would be... I personally... Oh, volume of gas. Ah, nice. So I don't know if you can figure out what the consequences of this are. If you're with me in the class, I do a stupid demonstration. It's good fun uh, demonstration with a can, an aluminium can, and I boil some water in it. Then I condense the water down from gas to liquid very quickly. But my point being that the volume of liquids compared to the volume of gases, and we're only interested in volumes, are inconsequential. I might do some sums to prove that at the end of this video. So we can scrub the liquids entirely, believe it or not. The volume of that liquid will be so small compared to the volume of the gases, we can call it zilch. So this is still an excess question. I'm hoping you can see that because we have one mole of this reacts with five moles of this. Now, at this point, some of you will be worrying about being able to convert this into a number of moles. But because that, that can't, cannot be done, because the molar volume 
is required to do that, and it's not in this question. But the wonderfully sweet thing is you don't need to. Because here's the maths dodge. If one mole of this is exactly the same as one mole of this, volume-wise, that means you can change straight from moles into centimetres cubed, believe it or not. Or litres. Um, and three centimetres cubed. So we can instantly switch these ratios from moles to, in this case, volume. You can't ever do that any other place because everything else has different GFM's masses. No way can you do this. But you can do it with gases because they all have identical molar volumes, even though you don't know what that is. It doesn't actually matter because they're in the same proportion. If you don't quite understand the maths of that, I'm going to say something incredibly unscientific. Trust me, just do it. You should never trust in science, of course. That's the whole point of science. We're constantly trying to disprove each other and find out what is really true, not what people want to be true. So anyway, one to five to three. Now, we don't have one of this. We have got 100 of this. So let's substitute in the numbers. We've actually got 100 of this. will react with 500 of this. And we will make... If that happens, I suppose we should actually check at this point, can we do this? Which of these two is the limiting chemical? So if you wanted to burn all of that 100, you would require 500 of this. Do we have 500 of this? Yes, we do. We've got 600, in fact, of that. So wonderful. That is all going to be burned. That is now going to be the limiting chemical. So everything is in that ratio. So it's 100 to 500 to 300. Just as an aside, if we had gone the other way, um, you would if we'd said 600 of this, is that off shot? I think that's off shot. There we go. Um, if we tried that, can we use all of this up? Then you would have needed, um, it's 1 to 5, so you divide that by 5, uh, 600, over 5, I should have done that in my head, I really am tired, you would have needed 120 of the propane. And we. this is the technique I showed you in the other excess question. It doesn't matter which one of these you pick, you will still get the same answer. No, we can't do that because we only have 100, so that is not going to happen. This does happen. Now, at this point, you might be tempted to stop and say, oh, look, 300, oh, yeah, Baldy said we don't need to worry about the water, so let's leave the water. Look, we've made 300 centimetres cubed, and it's the first answer. Isn't that convenient? Can I bring you back to this word here, total volume of gas? How can there be a total if we're not including this? Well, maybe the brighter amongst us have already sussed this because we burned all of the propane. We only burned up 500 of the 600 of the oxygen. So therefore, we actually had 100 excess. And of course, that is what the definition of an excess chemical is. There's some of it left at the end of the reaction. So we need to add that to our 300 and we get a total, in fact, of 400 centimetres cubed. And that is your mark. Um... So, what's been going on in this question here? This question here is a combination, really, of two things. It's a combination of an excess calculation, and they're asking about the products, and they require you to know that you don't include water. This one here specifically gave you a hand here. It gave you an L, and it mentioned gases only. Sometimes they will not do that. They won't give you a state symbol here. They'll just give you a H2O, but they'll quote a temperature in here. They'll say something like, the mixture is ignited, and then left to cool to room temperature, or kept at 120, or something along these lines. And that lets you know whether you need to include the water. If it's a liquid, you do not include it. If the unusual conditions were that it was a gas, it was above 100 Celsius, then yeah, we would have actually... You know what? Let's follow through with that. What would, that have, what would the answer be if this was a gas? Well, it's three to... I'm oh, sorry, I've written over it, but it was four. So that would be 400. So we would make 300 of this plus 400 of that would be 700 plus your 100 excess. So the answer, oh look, they've included that. Of course they have. 800 centimetres cubed 
is the wrong answer because we don't include the water because it's a liquid in this case. But do watch out for that. That's a classic uh, trip wire that the SQA has set for you. I did mention that I might prove the maths at the end. I'm not going to prove it. Life is too short to do that. If you're interested, come and see me in the classroom. Um, and I can prove it to the more inquiring minds. But there you go, guys. That was video number 1.5, which is the second type of excess question, gas volumes, which actually turns out to be very simple. Because the molar volume is constant, you don't need to worry about different GFMs, and you can go straight. This is a ma magic dodge here. Straight from moles to volumes. And people sometimes freak out if they see litres in the question here. Oh, look, well, litres, do I have to multiply by a thousand? No. Just one mole becomes one litre and everybody's still very happy. Just realised I hadn't zoomed out again. Honestly. Sack me and get a professional instead. If you found this useful, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, folks, thank you very much for listening and bye-bye.